Hey everyone, Jason Shepard of the M0A Online Ground School. In this video, we're gonna make holding patterns easy. What is happening, M0A Online Ground School? Jason Shepard here. It is Mock Checkride May. And for this year of 2-3 Mike Zulu, because it's 2023, we are giving away some amazing things. In fact, uh, one lucky winner this month of May is going to win a one-on-one -on -one mock checkride with myself via Zoom. If you've got a checkride coming up and you want me to make a custom plan of action for you for a mock checkride, then we'll sit down and I will quiz you. We'll have some back and forth there via Zoom for about an hour. Head over to m0acontest.com to enter to win that. And even if you don't have a check ride coming up, well, we can all still use to learn a thing or two about holding patterns. Show of hands, just type in me or give me a hand raise emoji in the comments. Who thinks IFR holding patterns are really, really confusing? I'll give you both hands because it's true. They're very challenging. And I want to start by giving you some facts about holding patterns. Then we're going to teach through the different entries. And then we're going to relate it to some real world flying. How to actually, when I'm in the cockpit, when I'm in the flight deck, how do I really figure out how to enter that hold properly? Let me start with the first fact here. And it's a big one. Did you know ATC usually doesn't care how you get in the hold? Now, your check ride evaluator is going to care. Your instructor's gonna care. I care because I wanna teach you right. But in fact, I would be curious. Maybe someone could do a survey one day. How many, go survey 10 air traffic controllers. How many air traffic controllers could tell you the three IFR holding pattern entries? Two out of 10, three out of 10, maybe? Here's what controllers really care about. Can you stay on the protected side of the hold? No controller's gonna scold you and go, ah, oh, Jason, you made a parallel entry when you should have made a teardrop entry. They're not gonna do that. Did you stay on the protected side? Did you fly the hold as they expected to? But getting in the hold, they don't really care. But I'll tell you, your check ride evaluator is gonna care. Your DPE is gonna care. Your instructor is gonna care. So we're gonna care about it here. And let's start with some more just holding pattern facts as far as that goes. Look at this on your screen here with me here. Did you know with holding patterns, Right turns is considered standard. I know that goes against the grain. You're used to left traffic patterns. Well, right turns are standard in a holding pattern. Now, if you've done any holds, you know there's really two types, time and distance holds, right? As far as your inbound, outbound courses go. The time starts, if you're using time, by the way, over or a beam your fix. So just something else to really Keep in mind there. Now, as I alluded to, there are three types of holding pattern entries. They are direct, teardrop, and parallel. And let me show you, I'm a visual learner, probably like you, that's why you love these videos. Again, if you love these videos, please like and subscribe as well. It means the absolute world to us. Let me show you when you would use each of these and how they would really, what they would really look like. Let me give you an example. So look at your screen here, we map out the hold. I'll show how to figure out where the hold goes heading wise and everything else in a bit. But this green area here, if I'm approaching from the green area, I'm going to that VOR you see, you can see the arrows for right hand turns. If I'm approaching anywhere in this green area, I make what's called a direct entry. I fly on in right to the VOR and, and, and I'm in, right? That is called a direct entry. Now, my other type of entry I might make uh, over in this area would be a parallel entry. What's a parallel entry if I'm coming in from this direction? Well, a parallel entry says I'm going against the grain of the holding pattern. I'm, I'm in the wrong direction, right? I would head to my VOR or to my fix. I would get there. I would then parallel it outbound in this case, and I would come back around to enter into and then complete my right racetrack pattern. Now, the last type and the smallest area there is for the teardrop. The teardrop entry says that I fly to my fix, to my VOR, I go past it, and I make a teardrop back around and in. Now, again, like I alluded to, if you make a teardrop when you should have made a parallel, as long as you stay on that protected side, no one's going to you know, slap you on the wrist or scold you or anything along those lines. Now, let's get to the 
important part of this video. How do we figure this out when you're hurtling through the sky at 90 knots in a hunk of metal, right? We need to figure this out to pass a check ride to be that safe real world pilot. Well, let me give you an example. And I teach to use our heading indicator. Whether you're doing this in steam six pack or you're doing this on a glass panel, it doesn't matter. It all works the same. Now, many modern avionics will do this work for you, by the way, as well, especially if it's a published missed approach to a hold. But what if it's unpublished? Well, let's talk about that and let's teach it through. I teach to use the heading indicator. Imagine you receive a radio call like this. Skyhawk 23 Mike Zulu holds southwest of the Ocala VOR on the 210 radial. Maintain 6,000. Expect further clearance in 20 minutes. How do we handle that? We'll start by using your heading indicator. The first thing I do is I would drop that fix, in this case the VOR, right in the middle of this heading indicator. You can see, by the way, I'm on a nice north heading right now. I drop that VOR. I pretend it's right in the middle. Now, I need to figure out, okay, that 210 radial, where is that 210 radial? Well, you see, it's actually right here. That 210 radial, we draw a line out to get to our VOR, and now we can slap our right racetrack pattern right over that there. Remember, it's a 210 radial. We're holding on that as the inbound. Let me give you some arrows just to make it a little bit easier so you can actually see which way we're heading. I drop my fix in the middle. I draw from the 210 or wherever they told me to the VOR and I slap my right racetrack pattern over that and you can see, now I can visually see it. If I'm actually on this north heading, how would you make this entry? Well, you'd make a direct entry, right? You're heading right into it and make a nice right hand turn. That's not so bad. Let's look at another one here together. Imagine you receive this radio call. Uh, Skyhawk 23 Mike Zulu hold northeast of the Ocala VOR on the 030 radial. Maintain 6,000. Expect further clearance in 20 minutes. Same thing. I'm on north. I slap my, uh, uh, my VOR right down there in the middle. 030. I'm going to draw from 030 in to my fix, into my VOR. Remember, that's my inbound. I'm now gonna place my nice, beautiful right racetrack pattern down there and boom, I've got it, right? So you see now, how would you like to enter this one here? Well, if you said teardrop, it's a good answer. If you said parallel, that could work too. Technically, it'd be a teardrop entry. However, parallel would have worked as well. In this case, again, no one's going to fall to this one's actually kind of right on that cusp on that verge uh, of what it could be. So let's just do one more here together. Let's see if you can figure this one out. Let me give you the radio call. Skyhawk 23 Mike Zulu hold northwest of the Ocala VOR on the 330 radial. Maintain 6,000. Expect further clearance in 20 minutes. I'm going to zip it for a second. Leave this on your screen and see if you can figure it out. All right, I'm coming back. So if you need more time, pause this video here. Let's work through it uh, together now. What's step number one? Put your fix in the middle. What's my next step? I'm gonna draw a line from my 330 to my VOR. Don't let dyslexia sneak in. Well, I know we just did 030, now we're doing 330. You then need to slap your right racetrack pattern down. And now, do you see why this one is a much better parallel entry. On the previous one, we said teardrop parallel. It's actually a teardrop. This one, teardrop's really not even an option. You can see the only option with this is to make that parallel entry. Fly to your VOR, fly it parallel, right? And then work your way back around to get your nice parallel entry. Does that make sense? Does that help you quite a bit with that? Listen, holding patterns. I, I know they're complex. I, I know they're unique sometimes, but one thing we do here at M0A is, hopefully you've realized this, we break things down into plain English. So if you love my teaching style, if you love these videos, you're gonna really love the entire online ground school. Yes, we have a complete instrument pilot online ground school. Not only pass your written test, not only pass your check ride, but I'm in the business of making that safe, real world instrument pilot as well. Take a, a free two week trial of it at M0A trial. Dot com as well. And if you want to win that contest, m0acontest.com to win that one-on-one -on -one mock check ride that I'm going to custom make for you, your certificate, your rating that you're pursuing as well. 
Can't wait to read your comments below. Thanks for liking, subscribing, leaving comments. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see ya. Pass your FAA written test, pass your FAA check ride, or I will pay for it. See why more than 130,000 people trust M0A for passing their FAA exams. You're gonna utilize what we call our aviation mastery method, not just to memorize, but to become that safe real world pilot. You'll be prepped for your written test, prepped for your check ride, and most importantly, make you that safe real world pilot pursuing mastery. Because a good pilot is always learning.